Tapos sa may local site din so. Number four, lighting forward. Five, lighting forward. Turn.
שעוד נעבור לך. Can you speak to, to, to um, can, can you speak to Gifuwe, the TD, because earlier on he said uh, he's going to ask studio to call Natasha, now we are connected here, apparently they were can connected. Can Well, as you can see, President Cyril Ramaphosa there uh, uh, meeting his uh, Finland uh, counterpart, President Sol. Uh, he has just arrived, and earlier on we indicated that uh, South Africa is the largest trading partner of uh, uh, Finland on the continent. The relationship dates back to struggle years. These are the countries that supported uh, those who were fighting apartheid. And the uh, relationship did continue post-1994. Uh, this state visit was supposed to happen in 2020, but due to COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the decision was taken to postpone the state visit. It is now happening, and we expect the two leaders to discuss trade relations, but of course the geopolitics. When I spoke to the delegation from Finland, they told me that uh, South Africa is still a major role player on the continent and globally when you look at issues that are related to geopolitics and the issue of the war in Ukraine, it's likely to dominate the talks and it's likely to be a sticking point. But I'm not alone, I'm with Natasha Piri. Natasha, in terms of trade relations and also the coalition, these are the issues that will also dominate the talks. Definitely. Um, I like the fact that you actually touch on the issue of coalitions. Yesterday we saw the Johannesburg Mayor Tabelo Ahmad resigning, yet again putting coalitions into the spotlight. And we know that South African lawmakers will be uh, making a tour or embarking on a tour to Scandinavian countries countries including Finland. Remember Finland uh, is actually under coalition government and there's so many things that uh, South Africa could actually learn. Most of you know very well that you know we've spoken to experts and some predict that if the ANC dips below 50% at next year's polls our country could actually go into a coalition government. So these are just some of the notes that we can take. I like the fact that you talk I see the deputy president yes. is also there with ministers but also the issue of NATO. Mm -hmm. Finland has just joined NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This is a military alliance of European countries, including Turkey. Let's take a listen at this uh, revolution.
Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa there with the President of Finland and uh, the President of Finland is going to uh, take a walk down here to inspect the Guard of Honor and also later the President will introduce him to ministers uh, from South Africa's side and he will do the same. But as we pointed out earlier on, Natasha, touching on issues, um, the two countries are expecting trade between the two nations mm. to increase, much as uh, South Africa is the largest trading partner of Finland. Definitely, not only um, you know in South Africa, um, myself, but uh, the SADC region. Last week, you were here with Samgela Masego. You covered uh, the Namibian president. We do understand that President Ninisto, after paying a visit to South Africa, will also be going uh, to Namibia. And of course, this is part of Finland adopting the Africa strategy. Now, this is an important role. If you probably kindly expand on that as well. Yes, indeed, he's going to Namibia. When I spoke to uh, the Finland officials, they told me that the relationship between Namibia and <coughs> Finland dates back 150 years. And, you know, with all the colonial history of this region, and they will touch on partnership and increasing trade between the two countries as we listen to that rendition. I think um, you talked on something that's very important earlier on, the issue of NATO and, you know, Finland is actually a neighboring country to Russia. What does this mean? Well, when I spoke to the officials, they told me that it was in December 2021 when Russia announced that it will not allow countries or NATO to enlarge or to expand to the east and therefore uh, the nation the, the, in Finland felt that uh, this was infringing in their right to choose and the popularity for Finland to join NATO increase in relation to the people of Finland. But what really prompted this decision finally uh, to be taken when Russia uh, attacked Ukraine on the 2nd of February 2022. Uh, the, the numbers surged mm. in terms of the support for uh, Finland to join uh, NATO and therefore they took a decision to do that and something that uh, uh, Russia is not happy about because these are neighbors and Russia has been complaining that uh, NATO is expanding and that is threatening the security and the uh, autonomy of uh, the Russian Federation. And these are discussions that also will take the stage between President Ramaphosa and President Minister.
SA National Anthem of the Way and uh, now we expect President Ramaphosa to kind of engage the President of Finland. He often uh, likes to share some historic perspective in relation to Pretoria and its landmark like your UNISA and your Fuer Trekker monument. But for now, uh, those formalities where the president is introducing his uh, entourage, starting with the president, deputy president Paul Mashatile, who is currently an envoy uh, to South Sudan. He is also now involved in terms of assisting uh, uh, the president on international uh, engagements. Definitely. And just talking about uh, those engagements, perhaps if you can just talk about what uh, will center discussions today between the two countries. We know that renewable energy is also one of them. And I think this is quite interesting because over the weekend we saw that NEC, four-day NEC meeting, the issue around electricity also dominated, uh, you know, those talks. With South Africa, South Africa experiencing uh, the electricity challenge, this is something that they are likely to touch on. But when I look at the delegation, I see the Minister of Public Works, Minister mm. of Arts and Culture, and of course the Minister of uh, Justice and Correctional Service. So you can see that as ministers are here, some of those ministers will be uh, talking about issues related to their departments. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the Minister of International Relations, Dr. Naledi Pando, indicated that uh, the issue of uh, uh, the economy, it is going to feature high on the agenda mm -hmm. as South Africa is currently struggling uh, to ensure that we have a better economic growth. And just talking about issues of the economy, we also know that after the presidential roundtable, there'll be that business forum meeting later on. Of course, our economics desk will be covering that, uh, so our viewers can also stay tuned to that. But I mean, how important is it? Uh, I think in, in this, I'm more particularly interested in this uh, business meeting because there's a matchmaking session between uh, Finnish companies and South African companies. Yes, you have more than 30 companies who have invested in South Africa. And I think those companies will be represented. The minister earlier on talking about MTN and Nokia, the relationship there, but also issues related to uh, housing will dominate the discussions there. And also one thing that as South Africans we can learn from Finland, particularly the South African national broadcaster, SABC, is how the broadcaster, the national broadcaster in Finland is funded with a levy that is being paid by uh, ordinary people in Finland, particularly the working class and business, that levy and that money goes to the national broadcaster. And as I pointed out, the Fort Tracker monument, the president uh, giving a history uh, of that uh, uh, monument and I'm sure he is also going to explain to him UNISA, one of the largest institutions on the continent in relation to distance learning with satellite campuses even in countries such as Ethiopia. So here it's more of uh, familiarizing mm. uh, the president from Finland with what's happening here in, in Pretoria and all important uh, uh, places and the history behind those landmark uh, uh, places. Mm -hmm. I think it's also interesting, uh, if our viewers don't know, that Finland had actually come out of fresh elections just two weeks ago and remember the Prime Minister, well, former Prime Minister um, uh, Sana uh, Marie, who's one of the youngest in the world, had uh, actually lost Yes, uh, uh, you could see it was quite painful for her after losing elections and uh, there were even uh, speculations that this trip is going to be affected but uh, we were then told by the presidency that uh, the state visit will continue. So uh, people will be watching to see how Finland moves forward from uh, those elections but you can see in Europe, uh, it is a tough time and the war 
in Ukraine has actually affected uh, politics in Europe and not only in Europe, I guess even on the continent because the impact of the war in Ukraine is felt across the world. Mm. What other um, MOUs can we expect uh, to actually be signed today? I think it will be, um, they will be signing agreements that are related to, 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 to trade and investment. And I think uh, uh, we also expect uh, informal talks more than really signing agreements because you don't have a prime minister here you only have uh, the president and i think with that uh, natasha we can wrap and it was a short and a very precise with precision well miss sophie a lot of discussions that are going to come out of here of course as members of the media we also need to pose questions uh, to both presidents you know, uh, not only international questions, but also domestic right now. Yes, we will ask those hard questions during the press conference, but for now, it's back to Johannesburg.
Yeah. Bring the mic on the right.
in the making. We had hoped that uh, your visit Africa. We have had long friendships of many types with Finland, particularly the governing party that I lead has had deep and long-lasting relationships uh, over a long time and I had the joy of working with uh, one of your predecessors President Marty Atisari, when both of us were asked to participate in the peace process in Northern Ireland. And I remember very fondly the manner in which he and I were weapon inspectors in the conflict in Northern Ireland, traveling throughout Ireland and Northern Ireland in the heat of the night, uh, inspecting weapons and contributing to the peace process in Northern Ireland. And we're very pleased that recently uh, the Irish celebrated 30 years of uh, the Good Friday Agreement. I think it is 30 or something like that. And uh, President Atisari and I were very much a part of that whole process. So we have special bonds and special relations with uh, your country. It is suspicious that you visit us this week as we celebrate 29 years of democracy. Uh, in two days we will be exactly 29 years of our freedom. Without the support of Finland and our many other friends, we would not be where we are today. So we welcome you and your delegation once more. South Africa and Finland have very excellent and well-established bilateral relations. We have found in Finland a like-minded partner in various fields of cooperation, to be, be it in environment, in energy, and energy is important as we are facing enormous energy challenges. So we have a friend in you because you have developed in incredible technologies that can also make a contribution to solving our energy challenges. We've cooperated in maritime affairs, in science and technology, trade and peace and security matters. We meet at a time when the world is faced with multiple challenges. You and I have spent the better part of uh, more than 30 minutes talking about uh, the challenges that the globe uh, and the world is facing right now. We are in the midst of also a global cost of living crisis which faces many people in our country and indeed many developing economy countries as well. Food and energy prices continue to soar, as has inflation, not only in our country, but in many other countries around the world. Many people are reeling under debt rises, making it difficult for families to survive. Both small and large businesses are still struggling to return to pre-COVID uh, levels of profitability and production. The poor are particularly vulnerable when it comes to this, particularly in a country like ours where poverty and inequality are some of the biggest challenges, including unemployment, that we are having to deal with. Climate change is advancing faster than previously thought, affecting lives and livelihoods around the globe. 
And while we all agree on what needs to be done to reduce carbon emissions, developing economy countries are finding it difficult to secure the resources and the technology that would help them transition without incurring further indebtedness. Conflicts and instability around the world are exacerbating existing humanitarian crises and with our continent with events in the Sudan adding to this volatility. The ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine has had huge economic reverberations across the world including on our own continent and South Africa. We know that this conflict has also been polarizing and has seen multilateral systems of government being called into question and being put under pressure. And it is having an impact on the global architecture and with uh, effects that could be uh, long-lasting. As the international community, we have agreed on a common developmental path in the form of the UN Agenda 2023 for Sustainable Development and on meeting the Sustainable Development Goals. In 1997, as I said about President Atisari, President Atisari was received by President Mandela on a state visit to South Africa. And I am glad to be receiving you on a state visit to South Africa. At a banquet in President Atisari's honor, President Mandela said this to him. As we meet again after three years, you will see for yourself how South Africans have been using the freedom Finland helped us to win. This speaks to the contribution that the Finnish people have made to where we are today. Indeed, we have, with the support of our great friends, the people of Finland, won the success and the achievements that we have achieved. We have laid the foundations for a better life for our people, much as many of our people continue to face enormous challenges, some of which have it, their roots in the system of apartheid and colonialism that we went through. Even as we face enormous challenges, they are not nearly as daunting today as they were back in the early days of our democracy. Just as we overcame the problems back then, with the help of our friends, we will also overcome many of these problems. Finland has always been open to cooperation with us in pursuit of a better, more egalitarian world and South Africa, all the while with the highest degree of respect when it comes to relations with its partners in developing countries. Finland has never sought, as we know it, to impose its ways, its systems on any country, nor has it sought to do so with us. And we therefore have a great deal of respect for Finland and the Finnish people because in our relations you've always treated us with respect and it is for that reason that we welcome you to South Africa with open arms and we look forward to our deliberations but we also look forward to the engagement that we are going to have later with business people from Finland and South Africa. So, Mr. President, I thank you for undertaking this long-awaited visit, and I now invite you to make your remarks. Thank you. Your Excellency, <coughs> President uh, Ramaphosa, ministers, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, First of all, it is a great pleasure for us to visit uh, beautiful South Africa. Uh, 
it's uh, an honor. You know that uh, there is uh, a difference in our size. It's uh, good for the small countries to have a possibility of discussing with the most important country, countries of, uh, of uh, uh, Africa in this case. Uh, if we look at the map, uh, South Africa and Finland are uh, at the opposite ends of a long vertical line. We are divided by great physical distance, but united by many shared values, like you, Mr. President, uh, referred to. We, strong, <clears throat> we are strong constitutional democracies and advocates of human rights, equality and uh, multilateralism. Our relations are traditionally very good and long-standing, and I hope that during this visit uh, we can enhance them even more. It was uh, uh, very uh, sensitive to hear your memories of your discussions with our President Marti Artisari at the time. Uh, I have often had uh, discussions with him, and uh, I want to tell you that he has very warm feelings of all possibilities he had to work with you and uh, with uh, other colleagues for the peace, because uh, hardly there is anything more important than the state of peace, and the work, all work done for that is valuable. Uh, we uh, talked uh, quite a, a long discussion, just uh, also referring to challenges we have worldwide at the moment. Very severe ones, uh, a common challenge, uh, climate change, uh, uh, from that to food insecurity, wars and uh, conflicts. Uh, it is uh, very important that in these critical times we can share opinions from the north to the very south and finding a lot of similar thinking which uh, I uh, noticed uh, during our discussion which I respect a lot. Uh, you referred to war in Europe. Uh, you have seen in Africa many wars. Well, now we are facing and maybe understanding more how a war affects uh, to uh, all the nearby states and people. Uh, Russian's war is a grave violation of international law and the UN Charter and the consequences uh, from Russian attack to sovereign Ukraine, uh, they are felt also very badly here in Africa. Its uh, energy, food prices are getting higher. Thus, uh, once again, I want to repeat that uh, there is not more important thing than a peace uh, I also heard and uh, have possibilities of uh, looking closer the regional security problems you have in Africa. Sudan is now um, in very critical moment and uh, I fully support all the attempts for peace in there and I know that uh, South Africa is uh, doing its uh, best in this respect also. Uh, you reflected also to global developments. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, it will be very interesting to follow discussion and uh, attend to uh, UN meeting in September. I guess we will have uh, quite a wide range 
and hopefully a discussion where we find uh, ways for the future in name of peace once again. And I want to <coughs> repeat the word you said about uh, respect. We have to remember that uh, we have to respect each other. That's the only way of building up a, a common global future and uh, having a clear answer to those huge challenges we have together. And once again, I want to thank you. It's a great pleasure and honor for us to have a possibility of being in that chain where, a part of that chain where we develop uh, good relations between our countries. Thank you. Thank you, President. I'm sure our friends in the media will now give us an opportunity to have some discussions between ourselves. All right, uh, some technical.
ladies and gentlemen of the media. We will now commence with our brief media engagement. Um, after the two remarks from the excellencies, we will then open uh, the floor to questions, taking two questions from the visiting media, as well as two questions from the South African media. I'd like to now invite President Ramaphosa to kick us off with his opening remarks. Mr. President. Your Excellency, President Nesto, the President of the Republic of Finland, ministers, ambassadors, and officials from both countries, members of the media, and ladies and gentlemen. It has been an honor to receive President Nesto in our country, particularly during Freedom Month. And it is even more so in the week that we commemorate 29 years of our democracy, South Africa's liberation from apartheid would not have been possible without the principled solidarity and support from the people of Finland, the Nordic countries, and many, many other friends and allies around the world. So this is a very special visit for us. Even when we attained our democracy, the support from Finland did not waver, and Finland continues to play a key role in supporting South Africa's ongoing transition to a more prosperous society that leaves no one behind. I shared with President Ernesto my personal endearment for the great and honorable Finnish people in the year 2000, Finland's former president, Marti Atisari, and I were tasked with inspecting the Irish Republican Army arms dumps as part of the Northern Ireland peace process. I learned from President Atisari, as I have on many other occasions, just how invaluable principal solidarity is in building the relations and friendships and fellowships of nations. Indeed, Finland is a valued friend of the people of South Africa and our longstanding partner in development. It is our collective wish to see the bilateral relationship thrive and improve, especially with regards to the reciprocal trade and investment processes between our two countries. Later today, President Inesto and I will engage with business people from Finland and South Africa on how we can improve trade and investment flows between our two respective countries. A great deal of work is already happening in this regard. By way of example, Gauteng province recently entered into a cooperation agreement with the government of Finland in the fields of renewable energy and ICT infrastructure and towards the creation of a business corridor. We have agreed to expand Finnish South African cooperation in the following fields water management resource, water resource management rather, early childhood development as well as out of school youth and adult education. The digital and emerging in, uh, technologies is one other area. As South Africa and Finland, we expressed our shared commitment to preserving and strengthening a rules-based multilateral system, and we discuss several issues of regional and international significance and explored ways in which we can collaborate 
to drive effective responses to the major issues that affect humanity, be they climate change, be they peace and security. These include wars, the threat of change in the climate and economic inequalities as well. We agreed that a world free of conflict, instability, poverty, inequality and underdevelopment is our highest aspiration and that deepening our solidarity and cooperation is indeed paramount. With these few words, I want to thank you once again, President, for visiting our country and for having accepted our invitation to come to South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, President Ramaphosa. It's a great pleasure and honor for us to have a possibility of visiting your beautiful country. Uh, like uh, you said, uh, we have uh, very good relations, long-lasting very good relations on several sectors of uh, life and uh, uh, obligations of uh, state. Uh, with me I have a, a business delegation. The idea is to try to find as much as possible the possibilities of increasing our trade, but it's not only because of trade, it's also uh, trying to find uh, any such uh, areas where we can be helpful also, uh, for example, on how one can uh, fight against uh, climate change here. So we have a possibility of meeting those uh, representatives of both countries uh, from the business world and uh, I guess and hope that we will hear good news. One of the elements uh, which is uh, now I understand always uh, at the table is peace mediation. Uh, we have, like we heard uh, uh, with my predecessor, Marti Atesari and President uh, Ramaphosa, an old relation how to build up peace in very difficult circumstances. Uh, I'm glad to, to inform that we have today agreed on signing a peace mediation agreement. So that very important work will continue. We discussed also on the global developments, which are not necessarily all of them positive. It is most important that we don't find ourselves living in a globe which is divided with very deep differences into two or many other parts. The, all the work for trying to enhance understanding between uh, nations and between people are now most valuable and I have a deep feeling that we have in our discussions today made our best to that direction. I took up also the European situation where the Russian attack to independent Ukraine has shocked common opinion and for example for Finland and Finns it meant that uh, <coughs> we could not continue living as a neighbor of Russia with full trust of our security, with full trust uh, of uh, guaranteeing, guaranteeing our security just by ourselves. And that is why that opinions in Finland changed very rapidly uh, in the end of uh, 21. Some 20% uh, of people uh, supported NATO in three months time after Russia had dem demanded that uh, NATO can't enlarge and attacked 
an independent sovereign country, Ukraine, Finns change their minds and 80% of the population was pro-NATO. So I think that this is a very clear, simple and justified explanation of what happened. Unfortunately, the war in Europe has caused also problems which you can see here because of Russian attack, the war has uh, increased uh, a lot uh, uh, prices of food and energy and even uh, created problem of how to get them. These experiences only enhance our main message, what uh, was, uh, I guess we agreed, any, any attempt towards peace even if it wouldn't uh, be successful, is f worth trying. We also discussed about uh, how future uh, globally we'll see, and uh, uh, both of us uh, noted that uh, the position of girls and women is uh, one of the key elements to have a better world, and working for that together is uh, one of our goals too. To end up, I had the great uh, honor and pleasure to visit and have a <coughs> very deep discussion with uh, you, Mr. President, and uh, I feel myself honored to have a possibility of inviting you to Finland uh, in timing which uh, is uh, uh, suitable for you. And in advance, congratulations for the nation for its celebration day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, President. Thank you. Thank you very Appreciate much, Your Excellencies. We will now open the floor to questions. We have open minds on both sides. As always, please introduce yourself and the news media outlet that you're representing. The first question will go to Pasi from the Finnish Broadcasting Company. Pasi. Yes, thank you. Uh, so my name is Pasi Toivonen from Finnish Broadcasting Company. Uh, Your Excellencies, this one goes to President Ramaphosa, but I hope that our President can also comment on this one. Uh, President Ramaphosa, uh, the International uh, uh, Crime Court has uh, issued a warrant on uh, President of Russia, uh, Vladimir Putin, and Mr. Putin is scheduled to visit your country in August. So the question is that will you uh, arrest him and uh, hand him over to ICC. If so, why? If not, why not? <laughs> Mr. President. Well, thank you very much. Why did I suspect that you would be asking that question? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, indeed, the ICC has uh, uh, made a statement in that regard. And as you well know, we are due to host as South Africa the next BRICS summit in August of this year. And the BRICS summit is often and often attended by uh, the heads of state as well as uh, ministers and a number of other officials. And in our case, as South Africa, we have tended to have what we call an outreach program where we invite a number of other countries uh, to be part of this. And in our uh, experience, we've often wanted Africa uh, to be part of the BRICS summit. So yes, indeed, uh, having heard what the ICC has said in relation to President Putin, that matter is under consideration and discussion and I've often said when I'm asked this that when the matter is finalized, we will be able to tell everyone, and hopefully including yourself, uh, what our posture is going to be on all this. So be rest assured uh, that uh, this matter, having been discussed, we will be able to uh, tell everyone uh, what our posture is going to be. Well, when it happens, uh, 
when it happens. Thank you. My comment. Well, I'm afraid that uh, I will not be a part of th those discussions. So, <coughs> Finland uh, has joined the ICC basic uh, um, foundations uh, and uh, we surely follow ICC uh, opinions and orders. This is what I have already said in Finland. Thank you very much. The second question goes to Sophie. Sophie Mugwena from the South African Broadcasting Corporation. Mr. President and uh, President of Finland, starting with President Ramaphosa, it is a follow-up to this question. The ANC had its National Executive Committee meeting and today the Secretary General of the ANC, Figile Mbalula, announcing that a decision has been taken to pull out of the ICC. We know that in 2017, that was the resolution of conference 2021, uh, you rescinded that resolution. And it will take two years for South Africa to pull out if you start the process now. And therefore, what's on the table, you can't change. That speaks to the warrant of arrest against President Putin. Has the ANC taken that decision to pull out? And how do you hope to go about this decision? And to President, uh, the Deputy Secretary General of the Council of the Security Council of hey. that was quick. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, it's the wind. <laughs> yes. Uh, the deputy chair of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Mr. Dmitry Medvedev, said that uh, they are going to continue with the war because the expansion of NATO to them is a threat to their own security. What is your reaction? And finally, from both leaders, the situation in Sudan is very bad. And we heard about the 72-hour truce. But we are told that uh, both sides have violated the truce or the ceasefire. Do you want to go first? No, no. Oh, I should go first. I'm sorry about the flag uh, dropping down. It, uh, it's a function of the wind, and it's now been removed out. It could have been quite a disaster, because it almost fell on your head. But we are both lucky. Yes, aren't we lucky? <laughs> Yes, the governing party, the African National Congress, has taken that decision that uh, it is prudent that uh, the South Africa should pull out of the uh, ICC, largely because of the manner in which the ICC has been seen to be dealing with uh, uh, these types of problems. And there's also been commentary, I believe, from Amnesty International where there's been a reflection uh, on uh, what many people believe is an unfair treatment. Uh, and our view is that uh, we would like this matter of uh, unfair treatment to be properly discussed. But in the meantime, uh, the governing party has decided once again that there should be a pull out. Uh, so that, that will be a matter that will be taken forward. With regard to what is happening in the Sudan, we are concerned and have been concerned about the outbreak of uh, violence, uh, particularly in the Khartoum area, uh, where a number of people uh, have found themselves in a very, very dangerous situation. We have had, like many other countries in the world, to evacuate South Africans, as well as giving assistance to our sisterly countries on the continent who have had people stranded uh, in that conflict. 
and they are now uh, in Egypt, uh, about 77 South Africans and uh, uh, nationals from countries such as Angola, Namibia uh, and others. And I do believe that we could have given assistance to also some people from Brazil. Uh, but for us, it is a dangerous moment uh, for many people and we've had no choice but to go and lend assistance and uh, get people out. And we, we hope that they will be able to return back to South Africa and their respective countries. We obviously are grateful that there's a small window of um, opportunity to be able to do this during this small ceasefire moment. But in the end, we want a, a situation where there is a permanent ceasefire and that the conflict must be brought to an end. And obviously, uh, we will, through the African Union, be seeking to make uh, interventions uh, also through the regional body IGAD that that war uh, that conflict should come to an end nobody ever benefits from conflict particularly violent conflict it just destroys life and disrupts uh, economies and the lives of ordinary people and it is for this reason that we insist and call upon uh, those who are involved in this conflict to immediately seize uh, the violent uh, activities that they are involved in and peace and mediation is the only way out. That problem uh, in the Sudan can only be resolved through negotiation and mediation and that is what we are calling for. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I was very sure what you do. You want my answer to Sudan or both Sudan and uh, the statement by the Russian Federation? Okay, okay, yes. <clears throat> what comes to situation in Sudan? I have to say that I believe we got a full answer or already. I have very much little knowledge and possibilities of adding anything but uh, agreeing a lot. Uh, I think that it's very important that African states and uh, state leaders have taken a very decisive <coughs> uh, position here and uh, are in a way uh, in my eyes, it looks that uh, they want to solve this crisis by themselves. And uh, this is a fine uh, principle. What comes to Medvedev and was it uh, his uh, well comments on NATO being involved? Okay. Uh, yes. If we look at the war in Ukraine, how it started, a big neighbor attacks uh, a smaller one from different uh, uh, sides of the country. Uh, that was uh, a full invasion. Uh, it rose, like I said, a public feeling amongst, amongst European people. This is wrong. And uh, when uh, people in in free uh, nations have an opinion. It ha reflects also on politics. And this feeling surely was noted and that's why the governments decided to help Ukrainians. In Finland it was very obvious because we were attacked by Soviet Union in 39 and we were left almost alone which was, uh, which still is in nation's memory. So the same feelings uh, seemed to raise in uh, the states too. And so there's a huge Western help for Ukrainians. But all the
But um, from the very beginning, it has been very clear that uh, avoiding any kind of enlargement of the war, escalation of the war, has been thought thoroughly. That uh, deals with the horizontal and vertical escalation. And, uh, uh, well, what we have seen is uh, that uh, the support from uh, European countries, from Western world, has increased. It has also come heavier. But nevertheless, the aim is to help Ukrainians to defend, to defend their country. And uh, there's nothing wrong in that. Uh, and um, as it remains as a help of defending, it's very difficult to uh, try to say that it's escalation. Thank you very much. Uh, the second question goes to Oli. Hello, I'm Olli Varis from uh, Ilta Sanomat. A question for President Ramaphosa. Mr. President, you have blamed NATO for the war in Ukraine and resisted calls to condemn Russia. Uh, how would you explain South Africa's Russian policy to Finland, as Finland has just joined NATO because of Russia's attack, attack to Ukraine? Uh, why do you see problem in NATO and not in Putin? And a follow-up to President Niinistö, what do you think of Russians' power game in Africa and how should Finland and other Western countries respond to Russia's challenge? Well, let me start off by saying in my discussions with President Niinistö, he explained very well and uh, uh, outlined the reasons and the steps that have been taken by Finland to want to join NATO. And it is within Finland's right to decide to join NATO. They hadn't been part of NATO for the longest time and now they've decided to join NATO. And uh, we respect that and we accept that. And uh, so we can never really question the right of a nation to decide which formation they want to be part of. With regard to our own stance on this whole conflict, we've been very clear right from the beginning that conflicts of whatever nature are best resolved through negotiation. And I've often said that this was a lesson that we were well taught by the father of our democracy, Nelson Mandela, who from the time he was in prison insisted that conflicts, including what was deemed to be a most intractable conflict of uh, apartheid, should best be resolved through negotiation. And he insisted that that should be the case. And he triumphed in that Upon being released from prison, the negotiations then ensued and they brought an end to the nightmare of apartheid. And that is the great lesson we've learned from the great Nelson Mandela, which we continue to propagate and say any conflict needs to be resolved uh, in that way. And one of the reasons why we've adopted this stance of being non-aligned is to ensure that we are able, even as a country, to play a role in helping the conflict to come to an end. And I have, on a number of occasions, spoken to President Putin, and my message has always been clear. There needs to be a negotiation, and also when I've spoken to President Zelensky. Because we do believe that every conflict, even if it's a war, in the end has to come to an end, and the end has to be a negotiated uh, conclusion. And so we, therefore, 
have this, that view. And uh, we are pleased that on a number of, uh, number of countries on the African continent subscribe to this approach and to this view. And that is why even today we support efforts that are being made by a number of uh, countries to bring this conflict to a negotiated end. So that is the approach that uh, we still hold on to. And of course, uh, with regard to NATO's role, NATO obviously continues to play the role it is playing. And we've also observed that, yes, there have been concerns and fears uh, in relation to agreements that were reached about what, for instance, Russia believed was an encroachment that threatened their own security. And we've taken note of that. Uh, but notwithstanding, uh, having taken note of that, we still believe that the parties, uh, be they in Europe, uh, together with Russia, do need to negotiate because there is just no other alternative other than to negotiate for a peace. And that is the best alternative that we see. Thank you. Yes, um, I referred already that uh, we are hopefully not facing a globe which is dividing into two or three more pieces uh, and uh, that differences uh, between nations are deep. Uh, you asked about uh, power came, uh, Russia's power came in Africa. I would say that uh, uh, I would rather answer to power came as, uh, as a general item. Uh, it's played by many and it's played elsewhere uh, by <coughs> than Africa too. It's played globally. And uh, you might uh, call it uh, as a competition of nations' souls. Uh, <coughs> this, is, uh, this has been, this is not a new phenomenon. Uh, this has been taking place uh, surely on earlier times, but maybe we see more of that now. And uh, the uh, war in Ukraine is one dividing element which uh, maybe not in itself divides, but it creates thinking around it uh, where many, many other things are uh, also involved uh, that, uh, that may actually grow us apart more. Uh, I fully agree uh, with uh, President uh, Ramaphosa. He has uh, underlined the importance of the uh, United Nations. And uh, I have said that it might appear that next uh, autumn, when we have General Assembly, that will be an exciting one because of these reasons I told. Uh, I would uh, also point out that uh, even in Finland we hear now a lot of criticism uh, against the uh, United Nations and against uh, its Security Council, which undoubtedly haven't succeeded to make any decisions uh, lately. And uh, this is uh, even an earlier experience. Uh, there have been uh, quite uh, radical words said about the uh, United Nations. But my answer is that, uh, what then? What instead of that? If we give up United Nations, we have nothing left. And uh, a situation where um, we have ten tense feelings around the uh, globe with nothing common left is even more dangerous. So even unsuccessful UN is better than not a UN at all. Thank you very much, Excellencies. And to wrap us up is Natasha. Good day to both presidents. It's Natasha Piri here from SAPC News. Um, I just want to know, after this um, state visit, Mr. President, will there be a possibility of increasing 
um, well, more trade between the two countries because, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Finland has invested 2 billion rand in our country over the um, past three years or so. And then just on coalition governments, coalitions have become a norm in Finland. Um, earlier on this year, we spoke to the chair of the parliamentary committee on COCTA, Mr. Figile Kasa, and he had indicated that MPs will be embarking on a study tour to Scandinavian countries, including Finland, to investigate how they've managed to make coalition governments work. So maybe to President Nanisto, what will you be teaching our lawmakers? And to President Ramaphosa, what do we expect? And then just last question, Mr. President, President Ramaphosa, um, there's just been some public outcry on the landing of the pri private air airplane uh, by the UAE leader and Bisho. Just your reaction to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to talk about coalitions? Uh, and what lessons you can impart to me? Well, uh, actually, I have huge respect uh, on teachers, but I'm not myself one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, starting off with uh, the issue of uh, coalitions, uh, clearly, uh, a number of countries around the world, including countries in Europe, have a lot to teach us or to impart as lessons to us because they have been involved in the coalition business uh, for much longer than uh, we have. And they obviously are more economically better developed than we are, and that stands them in good stead and they also have more developed and more uh, stable public service uh, architectures where even as the parties may change in terms of government, the provision of services uh, to the population continues because they have established that stability at the public servants' uh, level. And uh, we have not yet reached that, uh, that milieu, and that is why whenever there are changes in coalition government at the political level, it also impacts negatively on the services that should be provided to ordinary citizens. So, that is where we go, need to go and learn how they have mastered this. And it is for this reason to try and resolve that challenge that we have decided on professionalizing the civil service. That the more your civil service is professionalized and uh, people with good skills are appointed and they have good tenure uh, in their positions, uh, then you are able to stabilize uh, that important layer of government, which is a civil service, so that even if there's a change of a mayor or a premier or whatever, uh, that provision of services continues because uh, the people must not suffer at the expense of changes at the political level or political leadership in government. So they have mastered that, and that's what we need to go and learn and uh, get to understand. Uh, with regard to the issue that you referred to, the landing of a plane from the UAE, uh, the various processes uh, were, were followed, and that are, they are going to be explained by the various ministers who've been involved uh, in this whole uh, process uh, of the visit by the president of the UAE and the landing of the plane uh, in the Lebu airport in the Eastern Cape. So that all has a clear explanation and the relevant ministers are going to be able to explain that because uh, there is an explanation uh, that has to be given, yes, to the people of South Africa uh, and also the processes that were followed uh, and the various permissions that were also uh, given for that whole uh, visit to be facilitated. 
So that will be explained in full. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, maybe, maybe I continue it a bit, not by a lesson, but just telling what happens in Finland in this aspect. First, quite uh, pragmatic opinion. Uh, I don't remember we have ever had a party which would have more than 30%, or I don't remember. Uh, so it's a necessity to have a partner if you, the biggest one is forming a, a, a government. Uh, our tradition actually started, in my opinion, uh, more than 100 years ago we had a civil war. And after that, the defeated uh, side, uh, political side, was uh, invited to government in 10 years time after the civil war. And that was the key element why fin Finns could keep together during the Second World War when uh, in winter war Soviet Union attacked us. Even those who had lost understood that we are keeping together. And from those times we have a tradition of uh, coalitions, but uh, on the other hand we have to keep in mind that our model, which goes over the line left-right, is not familiar in other Nordic countries. They more stay on their blocks. So there are different kind of modifications how you cooperate. Maybe on the coalitions issue, we have had coalitions right from the beginning of our democracy, which people tend to forget about. The very first government led by President Nelson Mandela was a coalition of some sorts. In fact, it was called the government of national unity. Uh, and beyond that, the governing, the majority party has always brought in people from minority parties. Up till today, I have in my cabinet uh, participation by a minority party and that has always worked well and where the majority party has won more votes it should behove on that party to then decide to form a coalition government which we have always done so we have deep experience it is at the local level where there is a great deal of instability and it is this that we need to resolve and stabilize those local government or municipal governments. And that is why we're now thinking of having a threshold. Uh, if you have a particular threshold uh, where your support level goes beyond that threshold that uh, you can then be part of uh, a coalition government so that there is no instability. Because in the end, it is the service that we provide to our people that should come first rather than the spoils of uh, governance. So that is what we need to focus on. But I look forward to the lessons that we can draw from countries such as Finland on coalition governments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. That brings us to the end of this media briefing. Thank you very much.